Hello viewers, welcome back. In the previous two videos, we have seen how we can analyze some PDF documents and also how to find whether they are malicious or not. In another video, we saw what are the various ways by which we can capture the metadata information from image files. In this video, we are going to learn how to make use of a tool called as John the Ripper for cracking passwords. Let us first of all understand what are the various ways by which we can crack into a password. For this, we are going to refer this beautiful book, Digital Forensics, written by Dr. Jitendra Pandey and Dr. Ajay Prasad. So let me go to this chapter number 2.6, that is application password crackers, and let us understand what are the various ways by which we can crack a password. Well, first of all, let us understand what is a brute force method. Brute force is a method by which we try to crack a password by guessing each and every possible combination that could make up the password. So in short, we first of all start with passwords of character length 1. We try all the possible combinations of alphanumeric values or even uh, special characters. A, B, C, D till Z, 1, 2, 3, 4 till 0 and then special characters and so on. If our password is not found, we will increase the length of the password and try to find all the passwords of length 2. It could be 1, 2, it could be 1, 3, A, B, A, C, Z, P, Z, D and so on. Until and unless our password is found out, we keep on trying multiple combinations and at one point of time, we would be able to capture the original password. But the only drawback of this method is, it is very, very time consuming. We can crack passwords of length 3 or 4 characters quickly, but if the password character keeps on increasing in terms of length, then it will take a very long amount of time to crack those passwords. For example, if the password length increases, the time to crack it increases exponentially. So as a result, a long password or even a very difficult password which consists of alphanumeric as well as combination of special characters, in such a case, it can even take decades to crack a password. This is the very first and the most crude method of cracking passwords. Next up, we are going to learn about dictionary attacks and rainbow attacks. So I'm not going to focus on all the attack types. I'm going to focus on brute force, dictionary and rainbow attacks. That is what we are going to implement in our practical session. So let us understand what exactly is a dictionary attack. Why is, the, why is it called as a dictionary attack? Well, it's very simple. Instead of trying all the possible combinations of a password, the attacker will try to match the password with a dictionary file. Now this dictionary file could be a huge file which consists of words, common terms, common terminologies, birthdays, etc. Uh, for example, people have a tendency to keep common words as passwords. They even don't change the case sensitivity of that word. For example, it could be their name itself, it could be their birth month, it could be their uh, place of residence, it could be even their pet dog's name. So these are the few common words which constitute the dictionary. So the attacker has to either uh, keep on collecting a lot of words and place it inside a dictionary or using some other methods, for example, social engineering, the attacker may try to gain a lot of information on that victim, then start gathering all the information about that victim and keep on storing some words into that dictionary. This dictionary will eventually grow uh, in size and that can be used against cracking the password. So what exactly happens is, the first word of that dictionary is matched with that password. If the password is matched with that dictionary item, then the user may get access. Otherwise, the second item or the second word in that dictionary is tried against that password. This process keeps on continuing until all the words are exhausted from that word list or that dictionary. This is what we call as a dictionary based attack, also a word list based attack. Finally, let us move on towards the last type that is a rainbow attack. What a rainbow attack is all about? Well, in computers, uh, authentication is done with the help of a simple table where the name is matched against the password. Fine. But what if the attacker has got access to that table? Then the entire system's security will be at risk. So to avoid this scenario, instead of storing the password in plain text, the system administrator can store the passwords in a hashed format. 
that is the password will not be stored in its plain text format but the hash of that password will instead be stored in that table so whenever a user enters a password during login a hash of that password will be captured and that hash value will be matched with the value present in the table if both of them match accurately then that user will get access to the system otherwise the user won't get authenticated so while cracking the password what happens is again with the help of a word list or a dictionary each and every word in that word list will be hashed and each and every hash value will be compared with the hash value of the password which is stored in the table if one of those hash values matches with that password's hash then the corresponding word from that word list will be considered as the password and the user will be able to decrypt that password so why are we discussing about breaking the passwords when we are actually interested in learning about forensics well in certain scenarios it might happen that you have got the access of a computer you know that this particular computer has been used to perform all the attacks but it is password protected it is encrypted and you and you are not in a position to enter into that computer without knowing the password so in such a case you can make use of these password cracking tools and password cracking techniques using which you can break into that computer system and try to gather as much data as possible from that crime scene so without wasting much time let us start away with this process of password cracking the first video will be based on john the ripper and the next video will be based on a tool called as rainbow crack So let's now see how we can make use of John the Ripper to crack passwords. The very first requirement is we need a file that is password protected. So for that what I have done is I have simply created a text file. Let me show you this text file. And this is nothing but test file. That's it. That's what I have written inside this file just to save time. And I have compressed that into an archive file that is test file.zip and for extracting this you need some sort of a password. I have password protected it. Similarly, I have copied this file into the uh, shared folder, which I am sharing with Kali Linux. You can see if I go over here, there is this file present. Uh, let me go to my shared folder. This file is present over here, test file.zip. And in order to extract that, I need to have a password like this. I don't have the password right now and I don't even remember the password right now. So what I'm going to do is I need to crack this password. So the very first step to crack this password is first of all, let me copy this file on desktop for easy access purpose. Let me copy this and paste it on this desktop. The very first task that we need to do is we need to create a hash of this zip file. Why do we do this? We actually compare the hash values and not the plain text password. That is what we have discussed during our uh, early discussions right so what we exactly do is we don't compare the actual plain text of the password we compare the hash values of the passwords whenever there is a match with the hash values we can say that the corresponding plain text character to that matching hash value is nothing but the real password that is what we are going to do now so depending upon whether your archive is a zip or a rar file we need to make use of the command in this case, we are having the archive as a zip format file. So what we need to do is we need to make use of this command zip to John followed by the name of that archive file, which is present in the root directory. So I also need to give the complete, uh, I also need to give the complete path of the file followed by the file name that is testfile dot zip test file dot zip and press enter so everything you see on your screen between this dollar sign and this dollar sign is nothing but the hash of this particular file fine so what we need to do is now we need to copy this into a text file so let me copy this into a text file using this output parameter let me again paste it. Let me again uh, save it in the desktop. Give the path and let the file name be hash.txt and the output will be 
stored in this file. Uh, I guess, yeah, I have made a small mistake as this is case sensitive. As Linux is case sensitive, I need to have this as mm -hmm. capital D and press enter. So as you can see, that file is created over here. If I run this, it is exactly the same data as this particular data you can see on your console. So what now happens is whenever I try to decrypt this zip file, the corresponding hash value is computed and that will be matched with this hash value. If the hash values match, then only the particular password is accepted, otherwise not. So for that, our second and last step is we need to fire our John the Ripper tool using this command that is John followed by hyphen hyphen format. Over here, we need to mention what is the format of that protected file that is, is it zip, is it rar, is it text, whatever. And then followed by the hash file that we have just now created. This will be used to compare the hash of the passwords and then if it is a correct match, it will allow you access, otherwise the access won't be given. So let me do this. Once I press enter, a computation will begin and the corresponding matching password will be shown to you, hopefully. So let's press enter. The process has begun and as you can see within few seconds you will be able to crack this password because i remember i had given a very small password so as you can see on your screen this is nothing but the password so let me try to copy this i intentionally kept it simple otherwise password cracking processes may take even hours days weeks or even few months so we didn't want that to happen with us during our initial uh, demonstration so i simply use the small password let me copy this once again excluding the spaces let me try to open this zip file let me go over here to the actual location and let me try to extract this using this password one two three six five four and press ok as you can see extraction completed successfully so now you can see that we have actually crack the password using john the ripper tool using a simple word list so by default this was done using a word list in our next video we will see how to make use of a rainbow table to crack a password but before ending this video let me show you one more uh, application of john the ripper just imagine that you are having a linux computer in front of you and you would like to access the linux computer with the uh, login credentials but you are not having the login credentials with you and you want to crack into that computer system i'm just telling you the scenario from the point of view of a digital forensic investigator that you are having a computer full of evidences in front of you and you are not able to log into it because it is password protected so in such a case what you can do is let me show you to make it simple to keep it simple let's create a new user and show you the entire process what exactly happens whenever we would like to crack the password so the step is like this for creating a user you simply need to add these commands user add followed by minus r and give a name give a username for example user one two three and press enter now set a password for this user pass wd user one two three press enter it will ask you to enter the password. Let me type a very simple password. 126790 and press enter. Again, retype it. 126790, press enter. So the password is updated successfully. So I have just created a new user for you. What happens now is once this user is created, that particular user's password will be stored somewhere on your computer. Where is it stored? Let me show you. You have to go to your root directory and from that root directory, you have to go to etc folder. You need to go to the etc folder that is inside your computer. Click on etc and go to a folder called shadow. Shadow will consist of all the user IDs and passwords, obviously not in plain text, but it will be stored somehow. Either it will be in hash format or some other format, but this is the particular file which consists of all your data. So inside this, there's a shadow file just now you saw. That shadow file consists of all the information. Let me see if this can be opened. As you can see, 
all these information are present over here obviously this won't be in uh, plain text it will be somehow stored it will be somehow encrypted now let's see how we can crack into it. So for cracking into it, we need to make use of John the Ripper. It's again very simple. How to make use of John the Ripper? It's very simple. You simply need to type in John slash etc slash shadow. So all the activities you saw just now before this, that is matching the hash, comparing it with the uh, hash value uh, you had just now created, if they both match, your password is accepted, otherwise not. So it's very simple. Uh, now simply press enter and let John keep on working for you. Whatever user IDs are present inside that shadow file, all of those will be matched against some predefined hashes, which John the Reaper already has. And ultimately it will try to fetch out the passwords matching with those hash values. So let it run in the background. Ultimately, it will be able to capture or fetch the passwords matching with the corresponding hash value. So let it run in the background. We'll come back whenever it is done. So finally, after a while, it took approximately 25 to 30 minutes to come up with this password. And as you can see, this is the password which it has cracked and it is corresponding to the hash value for the user 123. So this is what exactly we had entered while creating the account so that is how we can make use of this very beautiful tool called john the ripper and use it to crack not only file passwords not only some application passwords but also some linux login credentials or login passwords also so these were the various type of password cracking techniques that i wanted to discuss with you all the first one was brute force attack we saw how is it different from a dictionary based attack. Dictionary based attacks are like you are having a long word list and you are comparing each and every password with that word list. If there is a match occurring, then the password is a correct password, otherwise not. Similar concept goes with rainbow attack. We are going to learn what exactly is rainbow attack. Uh, we have seen it theoretically that a rainbow attack is like you are creating the hash of a password and instead of matching the plain text version of the password itself with a word list, you are trying to match the hash of the password with a table structure and that table structure is nothing but a rainbow table so we are going to learn how to create our own rainbow table or our own word list using which we are going to crack a password based upon the hash value so stay tuned for the next video on password cracking using rainbow tables